passengers on the East Coast Main Line are in store for the biggest timetable shakeup in recent history, which includes a major uplift in service frequency. It comes hand in hand with the switch on of a new signalling system, known as European Train Control System, or ETCS for short, which will eventually be rolled out between London and Grantham. This is a pretty major investment. It's costed £4 billion to be precise. It's a completely new signalling system for drivers and operational staff to get used to, and the new timetable on the whole will be beneficial for passengers. Before we cover this topic, consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel if you're new here or you just haven't done so yet. Let's start by covering what ETCS even is. It's a signalling system that removes the need for traditional trackside colour light signals and replaces it with advanced in-cab equipment that gives real-time updates to the train's driver on the status of the line ahead. This means that the driver is constantly being updated on the target speed to ensure the safest and most efficient operation on the wider route. The monitor in the cab is known as the Driver Machine Interface, or DMI, which has a speedometer with a target speed bracket that the driver should aim to stay within. When the speed limit changes, the system plays a helpful sound effect, and the speed bracket gradually moves at a rate that the train's performance will be able to match. The ETCS system on each train is different in order to match the different performances of different types of train. If the driver doesn't slow down, an alarm will play to urgently remind them to slow down. If they don't, the train's emergency brakes will apply. The DMI also contains a moving map that shows the driver the status of the route ahead, showing the positions of any signals or obstacles, as well as any points where the speed limit's going to change. So the driver has a lot of information about the route ahead, and ample time to change their speed or stop if necessary. The system has required new trackside equipment to make it all work, which has been installed over weekend closures of the East Coast Main Line. The system prevents trains getting too close, as the emergency brakes will stop the train before it is possible to reach the obstacle ahead. ETCS will also facilitate the eventual removal of physical signals on the route, which will be replaced with block marker boards. For the next few years, physical signals will be kept on the route to allow trains incompatible with ETCS, like the Intercity 225 sets, to continue operation. However, once these trains are retired in the next few years, the signals will be completely removed which reduces disruption caused by physical signals not working as intended on the route. But the East Coast Main Line isn't the first installation of the ETCS system in the UK. That was on the Cambrian Line in Wales, which was commissioned in 2011. Since then, the Thameslink and Elizabeth Line core sections have also received the system, and then 2023 saw the pilot for the East Coast Main Line upgrade introduced on the Northern City Line between Moorgate and Drayton Park. But when it's introduced on the wider East Coast Main Line, what will the new timetable look like from December the 14th? The most major change is the introduction of a 6 LNER train per hour from King's Cross, which will also lead to a full shake-up of the LNER service pattern, with 32 new LNER services per weekday to and from London King's Cross. Currently per hour, there is one fast and one stopping service to Edinburgh, with the fast service continuing north of Edinburgh a few times per day two lead services which alternate stops, and then an all-station service alternating between Lincoln and York. From December, a new hourly service to Newcastle will be added to the timetable. Edinburgh will continue to receive two trains per hour, one new superfast service, calling only at York and Newcastle en route, and one slower service which is similar to today's stopping service. However, this stopping service will be the one that continues north of Edinburgh, rather than the superfast like today opening up direct journeys from the Highlands to more East Coast mainline destinations. The York and Lincoln stopper services and all lead services will remain at the same frequency, just with alterations to their stopping patterns and departure times. With the increased number of LNER services per hour, some services will be shorter than currently, with more five-car services operating. The Intercity 225 sets are being shortened in length, from nine to seven carriages. This is to match the acceleration of the IET trains, however. Hull trains will see a minor service uplift, with 8 instead of 7 trains per day in each direction, and Grand Central retains the same number of trains per day on both routes. Lumo, however, sees an extension of service beyond Edinburgh two times per day, 
to Glasgow Queen Street, with an intermediate stop at Falkirk High. Great Northern and Thameslink services remain similar, but Northern services outside of London that cross the East Coast mainline will see drastic changes. The amount of changes probably grants this a video of its own. Finally, East Midlands railway services between Nottingham and Lincoln Central that cross the mainline at Newark are also in for a major increase, from one to two trains per hour. This timetable change is part of an industry-wide transformation, and it's been in the making for years. Like any change this big on the railway, it will probably take some getting used to from passengers and staff, so I imagine the first week or so might see some disruption. But eventually, once the teething issues are over, I think this timetable will deliver massive benefits through service improvement on the wider railway network, as well as hopefully facilitating the rollout of ETCS on other major routes in the country. Thanks for watching today's video. I'll make a sequel in the first week of operation of the new timetable to see how it's going. So that you don't miss that video, make sure that you've subscribed to my channel and turn on post notifications.